We're going to make an extender cable here for the CRT. Uh, the other two extender cables I'm going to go ahead and put on hold. I have uh, what I need to do one of them, but my uh, mentor Brendan is getting impatient. He doesn't he's, he doesn't want me dilly-dallying around. <laughs> he said, let's get going on this thing so we can take some voltage readings under the chassis. He told me how to do it. I'm nervous, of course, uh, taking the chassis out, flipping it up so close to the neck of the picture tube, but he seems to have more confidence in me than I do when it comes to that. But, you know, he's been messing with these TVs for, you know, many, many decades, and, you know, this is my first time. So he, uh, what, what I'm doing uh, to, to build the uh, CRT extension wire is I, I have a, a standard old spark plug wire here. See, the, the, the CRT takes 13,000 volts to operate. So you can't just hook up any old wire between the high voltage cage or the high voltage output and the CRT. It'll just blow right through the installation. So you have to have something that can handle that kind of voltage. Well, a spark plug wire, uh, preferably one that's got a wire core, but you, you try finding one of those today. It's almost impossible. They used to be a dime a dozen. So I had to settle for a carbon uh, resistive uh, wire, and I cut the end off one end with my pocket knife. This right here. It was a... It was, you know, it had a wire that looked like this, and I cut it off, exposing the uh, connector, and I have taken a safety pin, I, I had bought a box of standard old safety pins, large ones, and I stuck the safety pin, now this is all per uh, Brendan's instructions, we need to make a, a, a contact wire here that we can stick down in this hole on the CRT, uh, on the uh, picture tube, you know, where the old, the old one uh, goes. And I stuck it down in there. It fit really nice. It just snapped right down in there, held itself, and I have soldered it in place. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this wire off here. I'm going to cut the wire off here. I'm going to bend little legs, and then when it goes down into the hole, it'll expand out against the sides of the hole down in the uh, CRT. I'll show you that later. Now on the other end, I'm going to put this spade connector. I'm going to whack this off. And I'm going to solder this spade connector on the other end, which will go to the connector that comes out of the back of the high voltage cage. Then I can go ahead and slide out the CR or slide out the chassis, and I'll have plenty of flexible room here. And uh, since we're dealing with very, very, very low current, uh, there won't be very much voltage loss in this wire. Again, I uh, took my pocket knife and cut the other end off here like this that exposed this connector and now the spade connector I spread it apart a little bit with a couple of needle nose pliers just so I'd have a little bit more of a friction fit down in there and added a little flux and now the trick is to heat it up enough to where it'll suck some solder down in there and solder it in place and I'm using my uh, third hand here to do it so let's see how that goes well, that went real good. That worked out perfect. We got it nice and clean. I got it cleaned it all up. It's solid as a rock. I mean, that's a <laughs> kind of impressed the way that turned out. I'm going to try to maybe slide this boot up just a little bit further up to about right there. But if I can't do it, I'm not going to worry about it. Well, there she is. This is the original cable. It eventually will go back into the television, of course. But for testing purposes, I now have this one. With the little expanders on the end that I can just stick down in the picture tube hole. And this one I can... Uh, fasten uh, to the high voltage cage output. I've got the chassis out all hooked up uh, except for the power resistor which I've just anchored right here with a screw to one of these uh, chassis mounting tabs right there. It's just something to give it a heat sink and uh, give it something solid. I'm going to run a couple of gator wires, one from each side and I'm going to open this wire back up. It comes from the choke and it goes over to pin 6 on the yoke plug. I'm going to open it back up, disconnect it. That's where we did the splice earlier when we put that new choke in. I'm going to open it back up and run one side to this side of the power resistor and run the other side to the other one with gator wires. And hopefully that will cut down our, our incoming voltage enough to max everything out in terms of B+. So we'll see. Now the spark plug wire has been connected into the picture tube as you can see right there that's the one that has the the uh, safety pin on that end and we come down and 
the other end is connected to right there. The output of the high voltage right there. That little spade connector. All I did was un un unscrew this thing here and then tighten it back down. And now I have that spark plug wire hook there. And I've got the uh, neck of the pitcher tube hooked up. We have the yoke plugged up with these wires down here. These wires right here. And we have the power connected with a couple of gator wires down to there. With one of these uh, four, uh, 400 ohm resistors in there, I cranked up the voltage to 120 volts and the B plus was reading 220. So we were short 40 uh, volts this time instead of being 40 volts over. Now Brendan had already calculated that what we needed was a 200 ohm and I went ahead and stuck a 400 ohm in there first just to find out. And now with this in parallel like this we now have 200 ohms. So let's see how close Brendan's calculations are. We're looking for 260 volts. Look what we've got. 254, 255. You know, depending on how accurate my voltmeter is. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to unhook this uh, TV power supply from the Variac and I'm going to plug it straight into the wall. As expected, I now have the set plugged into the wall and we're now getting a B plus of 267, which in my mind is right on. And uh, Brendan did real good. It's going down to 263. That's what we were looking for. And uh, the reason it's a little bit high is because my uh, household voltage is about 123, 124, depending on what time of day you check it, which is, you know, a little bit higher than what I had it set on my uh, voltmeter. I want everybody to see my TV and how it's working. It took quite a bit of uh, adjustment, but that's really all it needed. I was the guy who was causing a lot of the TV uh, vertical roll because I didn't, I really didn't know how to set this thing. But look at it now. I put another DVD in there and the old man in the sea, and you know the TV's a little washed out because it's a, a weak tube. But other than that, she's in great shape now. All I have to do is adjust the uh, down in the corner. I need to adjust the ion trap, and uh, Brendan's already told me how to do that to get that darkened area out of there. That's going to be fun. I'll show you how that's done. On the back of the picture tube is a metal ring that wraps around the neck, right here. It's uh, you know, it just uh, it just clamps on there. And over in the center here, see if I can get it in there. There's a magnet right there in the center of that ring. Now that ring will twist, you know, left and right around the neck of that tube, and it'll also, you know, you can slide it forward and back. Okay, so what I have to do is, you know, move it, you know, clockwise, counterclockwise, back and forward, and kind of adjust it around and play with it until I get that dark spot out of that picture. All right, all I had to do was push it forward just a little bit, just about a, well, about a, no more than a eighth of an inch and it straightened it right out just shoved it forward on the neck of the tube I'm pretty happy with that all right tomorrow if she uh, decides to keep working like she is I'm gonna run it for about four hours and after about four hours if it still looks has a decent picture and it doesn't do a whole lot of rolling I'm gonna go ahead and stick it back in this cabinet and, of course, you know, when you stick it back in the cabinet, that's when the problems resurface. So, <laughs> so let's hope it doesn't surface for a while, because I'm really, I'm really happy with this so far. We'll see what happens. Well, folks, that's it. It's been playing about four hours now, and I am going to put this baby back in the cabinet. I've got another... Uh, 200 ohm uh, resistor coming in. It's a uh, 25 water, and I'll be able to remove these two large 50 waters, these two 400s that I put in parallel. And uh, right now, I just temporarily mounted them right here. I hope they don't interfere with the tuner at all. If they do, I'll have to take. All I have to do is remove this screw right here. And uh, there's not even a nut on the back, but it, but it holds it secure enough that it's not going to go anywhere, you know. And the chassis is back in, and I'm going to take the original CRT wire. You hook it up between this uh, high voltage capacitor here 
and the uh, CRT hole up in there. Let me see if I can get a light a little better here. I'm going to need it anyway to hook it up. Okay, there it is there. Let me get this thing hooked up. All right, she's back in. Now all we have to do is fire it up and watch the sparks fly again and everything go to pot. <laughs> Before firing it up, I thought I'd give you all a better look at that ion trap. It's just a, a magnet right here attached to a band that, uh, you know, just sp it's a spring thing. It just, just springs out and wraps around the neck of the tube. Well, the idea of putting these two re power resistors up here temporarily didn't work out. It caused all kinds of problems in the picture, ghosting and all other sorts of things. I showed it to Brendan and, you know... He sort of read me the riot act about that. You know, he said, look, get it off of there, fasten it over here, make your wire as short as possible, which I knew about. But this was just, you know, just a couple of days to check the TV out, and then I was going to remove it anyway. But anyway, I'm going to have to, you know, cut all this back out and mount it over here for heat sink purposes. So the resistors have been moved uh, over to here, and uh, I stuck one of these little uh, wings, you see here, down between the blades over on this side and then just wrapped a wire around it this little wire hold it in place pretty solid and then just brought my wires straight up through the bottom here instead of running them out across to where they were over here He's than the skip. well there it is I'm playing pretty good it's not exactly perfect but I'll tell you what when I was a kid if we'd have had a TV that played this well and and, and the picture was this clear we would have felt pretty lucky <laughs> so yeah, I'll get with Brendan, and we'll do a few more adjustments on it, but I'll tell you what, for the most part, this TV is, is, is just pretty much done. You know, I'll do one more video on it probably, and that'll be it. So until next time, this is John.